conference, okay, we've done everything we could beforehand, now it's up to you. And we hope that you'll take every opportunity to meet people, to network, to share your experience, and to go back where you come from with new ideas, new research projects, new potential partners for future research projects or teaching projects. So I would, I'm not going to take the floor for too long, so I would just like to welcome you now. And I, the, the conference is now open. Uh, but uh, but uh, 
it was worth it. Um, okay, more to task. Um, uh, there was, I think here, a visible uh, emphasis on doing things and kinds of activities which I've described and many others too. The, the, the important idea of the morphology of action changing based on mediational means, less focus on mediational means, in other words, explicit technologies, more focus on what we're doing with these technologies, how actions and activities, communicative processes, semiotic engagement more broadly, are in fact transformed by these kinds of technologies, but the emphasis is on the actions, not on the things that are doing that mediation. I thought that was a very healthy thing. Moving away from technology, per se, to action mediated by technology. And I heard this across a number of presentations. Um, I also was quite compelled by uh, the ways in which discrete, focused, even narrow and constraining kinds of pedagogical and practice activities, which are incredibly important, right? I mean, in some ways, learning and uh, language learning in particular is a set of behaviorist uh, uh, practices that simply occur through a quotidian and, and, and highly repetitive engagement. These sorts of things were embedded in larger holistic and discursive activity types, right? Projects and, and such. And on the other hand, people focusing specifically on projects oftentimes talk about the need for these very specific kinds of either mini-game or practice activities that would then come to support the achievement of these broader discursive actions. I love this idea of practice and broader expressive engagement being fused together in pedagogically coherent ways. And I think you all are, are doing sophisticated and interesting thinking on that level. Um, another thing uh, that is a bit more prosaic, perhaps, uh, the technologies designed for educational engagement oftentimes were failing and discussed as failing. On the other hand, quotidian or vernacular technologies were highly successful. And I think there are two lessons to be learned from here. It's not that we shouldn't be developing environments for learning, you know, coursework management systems or communicative environments, particularly for, for uh, say, language learning uh, purposes. But uh, uh, we might want to think about uh, the use of vernacular internet communication and uh, uh, expressive tools um, uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it increases the agentivity of the learners, and for that matter, the instructors to make decisions contingent on the needs and purposes at hand. Uh, these technologies also leverage what I and uh, some others have described as the cultures of use, the emergent kinds of cultural dynamics, expectations of communicative activity that are associated with these tools, which can infuse uh, uh, engagement uh, in ways that is sometimes more difficult to replicate when you're using a more sterile, anemic kind of educational context uh, or platform. Um, uh, and uh, so uh, just one uh, last comment uh, on uh, a broader uh, theme. It's kind of two comments, I guess. Where's Merlin? Is this okay? Two comments. Um, the first is, um, across many of these projects, uh, I saw an indication of a broader awareness of the plural equality of everyday communicative activity. And of course, we now live under conditions of linguistic superdiversity where never have we had in both brick and mortar uh, built structure spaces like massive metropolitan cities, uh, but also in online environments, these opportunities for and the problems that arise from language contact, culture contact in these zones that are very complex and sometimes involve many different linguistic varieties uh, and many kinds of persons. And I think that this acknowledgement of linguistic superdiversity, if you will, as it's described in the sociolinguistics literature, is a very important uh, uh, a realization for us in terms of thinking both about the target of eventual language learning outcomes, because we have to train people for these very complex, very uh, sociolinguistically uh, diverse environments, um, and for the ways in which we might actually build some of those complexities into explicit educational uh, programs. Uh, some telecollaboration, a, a, a plurilingual approach to quote unquote foreign language learning, uh, I think is a, is a very interesting idea here. Um, and then the last comment, uh, and Joseph will probably talk about this as well, um, this idea of engineering conditions for learning. As we all know, I can't learn you something. That is an ungrammatical uh, construction in English. Learning isn't ditransitive in that sense, uh, and neither is learning vicarious. Learning involves engagement, and it involves direct participation. 
And so the ways in which we're thinking about technologies now, and this uh, again ties a little bit with this emphasis on thinking about uh, technology choice and using vernacular tools rather than built educational environments, um, we need to think about ways in which the activities and practices in which we engage encourage direct, agentive engagement as often as possible. Um, and this could be a mini-game environment that is more bounded and constrained with very particular types of desired learning outcomes or these broader discursive uh, kinds of expressive projects um, that, uh, that uh, I think are highly relevant to becoming a more sophisticated uh, and capable uh, communicator. So um, thank you again for stimulating the, the, the uh, last uh, three or four days, uh, infecting me, if you will, Happy. Um, with uh, these new ideas, uh, and uh, I look forward to uh, the future engagements over the years to come. <laughs>
again and again and again. Which isn't, I'm not saying it's bad, but you know, it's just the way that our field um, moves on, I think. Uh, it's also, in my view, it's also, I found it very interesting to, to see how when we talk about a new technology, um, um, first of all, one year you say this technology is here and we can, we can use it this way. The following year, we've taken that a step forward. So, for example, um, we've been talking about MOOCs in, in past conferences, uh, and this year we've been talking about tandem MOOCs. You know, so it's sort of building on, every year we build upon the technologies that we're talking about. I don't know if you have the same impression, but this is the impression that I have, and I think it's, it, it's good for us to do that. Um, and I think that there's a, a, a non-stop exploration um, in terms of the actual technologies and the methodologies, as, as you pointed out. I think it's, we're talking more and more what, what we can do to help the learners rather than, oh, wow, you know, this is a, a, a fantastic technology that, um, that happens to, to be there. Um, and also, I think one of the, one of the trends is um, that there's a, a, a the trend now is to develop, for example, uh, specific programs, specific uh, software, specific apps to help learners practice uh, specific and concrete skills, uh, which I think links very nicely to the fact that this year, for the first time, I think, we've actually had a, a, a whole conference planned on specific skills. I think that's been very interesting to see how, uh, not the technology, but the skill that that technology was, was helping to improve and develop, um, you know, um, how it, it, it was um, described and how it was presented to, to the participants. Uh, this, um, I'd like to link this idea with something that I talked about uh, last year at the Evera conference, which was my, my idea of atomized core. That's, that's what I've called it, and I think it describes the way that we're taking little bits from here and there, not necessarily wanting to integrate more to help the learner um, in a complete um, system to improve all of their learning, um, language learning performance, but um, atomized little bits that <coughs> make sense separately, actually, separately. Uh, and to close, I just wanted to, to comment. Um, I, I think that um, this, the, the Young's um, suggestion this morning that perhaps we have to um, face the changing role of the, of the teachers. You know, somebody suggested that, uh, will we do away with teachers? No, but I, I, I also firmly believe that there is a, um, a changing role and that perhaps our role now is to train the machines and train the software to help the learners rather than, but that's, you know, that could happen. We have to be prepared to, um, to change and to evolve as teachers and as instructors. And I'll close on that note. <laughs> uh, very briefly, um, I can only repeat uh, our admiration and appreciation for the organizers of this uh, conference. As a conference organizer, as a conference organizers, we know more than anyone else what it takes to organize this kind of conferences. It's not very easy, it was perfect. The only thing we forgot was to burn some more candles in some church here in Groningen to have better weather, but <laughs> uh, this rain helps us in focusing more on the presentations and work. I was extremely happy for uh, uh, three reasons next to the perfect organization. Um, first of all, the focus of most presentations uh, was not as deep said on technology that much, on advanced technology. It was also not exaggerated on pedagogical theory. I was happy with that as well. It's about straightforward good practice. But amazingly, I was happy with that. Not that much advanced statistics. As you know, one of my one-liners is if you need a 
advanced statistics to prove the difference, and the difference is not big enough. <laughs> um, no, if your, your design is okay, then you see the difference. Okay, um, the focus of most presentations, and I agree with uh, Steve, was on activities, on doing things with technology, but also on acceptability for students and for teachers, on the meaningfulness, usefulness, and enjoyability of tasks and activities uh, with technology. So the focus was on how to work with technology and what happened, also failures. It's nice to see, we learn more from failures, engineering approach, sometimes than from successes. I would have liked to see more emphasis on why. Why we choose to work with a particular technology? Why we choose to a particular research method? This is, I think, one challenge for the future in saying why the choice of a particular technology should be the result of a clear reasoning. And I don't see many of those reasonings in the abstract. So that's one observation. Uh, secondly, now we have this slide here. I use it uh, in many presentations to warn people for uh, persuasive language use. Those people who want us to use technology, who pressure people to use technolo technology, invent a vocabulary that we can use, uh, like uh, 21st century skills, flipped classrooms, virtual learning environments, digital pedagogy, blended learning, digital natives, moves, why not, bring your own device and serious games, which I have no problems with the terms in say, but what I observe is, and I've written something about that, is that the terminology, we all use those terms in a different exception. And that um, the, the thing is, they um, should, uh, that what I wanted to say is, I, I always only make frequent series or workouts of all the presentations, and, and I try to analyze those. I, I was not able to do that. But while, while reading all the abstracts, I just observed that the frequency of these terms was very low at this conference. And it's all about the time. We will try to make that frequencies to show that we're really, according, in my view, on the right track, the right path towards essential in our research. So, no buzzwords, no exaggerated buzzwords. Um, again, nothing against the terms, but let's use them correctly and not in the context of persuasive language use. And finally, the atmosphere at that conference, is, uh, like has been said, well, it, it is family feeling, and I can say um, not all conferences have this feeling of uh, family feeling where you just hug your colleagues and say, well, it's like a wedding, uh, you see your relatives. It's like, not really colleagues, whatever. But I must say, in earlier years at some conferences, there was this competitive uh, uh, atmosphere where you gave a presentation and people simply, instead of asking questions, started criticizing you. This, I know it better. We do it better in our context. Well, what, who do you think you are? This atmosphere has completely disappeared. When there are questions, it's all more collaborative, supportive feedback. And this is great. This, this gave me very good feeling. But I, on the other hand, I've seen that you all suffer from a terrible disease which is the pressure coming from academic meritocracy, which turns good colleagues within one institution into fierce competitors. And I can only call upon you to fight academic meritocracy, to listen to, as I said, to your heart, uh, your gut feeling, and say, let's work together on what we think is important for, call for our field. And OK, you can't fight it. In, in, to destroy it, but let's all find a way to find a balance between our own personal uh, convictions and what our institution tells us to do. Finally, inter on the international level, there are some countries seriously unrepresented at this conference. Might be the reason for the good answer, I don't know. Um, but what I've seen is there's not only the number of international collaboration. Uh, presentation, uh, presentations of international collaboration project, and that's nice. Not even international, but also intercontinental. If I say that Canada is another continent, <laughs> <laughs> uh, intercontinental collaboration uh, project. 
and this is just nice to see. What I see is that, uh, and I can also, uh, that's also a measure, if you absolutely want to measure something, the number of people attending a closing session is an indication of success of the conference. Thank you.